Hey Tribe, Gavin Syme here, and I'm excited about today's video. It's actually an extension of the video that I just did about noise or how to stop worrying about noise and start leveraging it to your advantage because when you leverage something, it always gives you better results and your noise can be turned into kind of an organic filmic light grain instead of fretting and getting all pasty and taking out a bunch of noise and ending up with a big mushy mess. I will link that video below because if you haven't seen that, you might wanna check it out. It's not Fuji specific. It's looking at Fuji camera files and full frame files from Sony and from Canon. And it's kind of looking at all these different aspects of noise and trying to address how we think about noise. This video is focusing on the Fuji X-Trans crop sensors and looking at the question, not only of how to deal with noise specifically on those Fuji files, but is Capture One, like people say, really better than Lightroom for noise. I've been talking about this for years. I lace it into my videos here and there, but I wanted to make a breakout video specifically about this, looking at the latest 2022 versions of these products. There's a lot of raw processors. You've got Lightroom Camera Raw. You've got Capture One. You've got On One. You've got all these different processors, DxO, and all of them can give you pretty good results. But there's a theme among Fuji users that, oh, you need to use Capture One because otherwise you're gonna have worminess. In 2022, is this really that much of a difference? Are they really handling the processing that differently? I'm gonna show you rather than just talk about it. So let's switch over to the screen. I have a bunch of images here at various levels of noise that are on, from various cameras. But a lot of these are on Fuji sensors and you can see this one here is from my X-T3. Let's pop this one into the develop module to start with. It was shot at ISO 2500, so not super high ISO, but definitely not low base ISO, enough that we're gonna start seeing some grain. But we're also gonna look at a Fuji file that's pushed higher so we can make some comparisons and make an informed decision on what, how, how to best handle this. Not only the best software, but how to best handle noise in these files to get a great looking result. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. This is Capture One. Obviously you can see the icon up in the corner. Switch this up to full screen 4K if you really wanna see every slider and detail I'm working on, because I'm gonna upload it for you guys at high res. Here's Lightroom. The image looks very similar, but as you can see, the way Lightroom is handling the shadows, it's a little darker and the blacks are pushed down a little harder in Capture One. That's the nature of Capture One. It's just the way it interprets images. And as somebody who's always making presets and packs for both Lightroom and Capture One and trying to build formulas that work good for any situation, this is something I deal with a lot because sometimes I'm like, wow, Capture One sees the Canon, the Fo Fuji, the Sony, it sees all these files. It interprets colors completely differently. On Fuji files, there tends to be more redness in the file than on Lightroom. And then you can kind of see here how red it is back down in here versus more yellowy orange. But bottom line, just like the noise stuff I'm about to tell you, you don't really have to worry about these. These both edit well. For point of reference, as always, I'm gonna apply some basic edits like I always would. So here we are in Lightroom. I'm gonna go for purposes of this because it's a night image to natural HDR and apply something like night strobe, okay? And it looks pretty good, but my white balance is a little weird. Let's make my white balance here a touch cooler. And I like that. We're about 44 or 50 on the white balance and it's looking pretty good. All right, I'm actually gonna go, now that I've applied that, I'm just gonna use a reset detail. So I have no grain or no noise reduction, just the defaults that Lightroom uses. Okay, now let's switch over to Capture One and I'm gonna do the exact same process. I'm gonna do the night strobe and again, I'm gonna to go to color up here and I'm gonna turn our white balance down to about 44, 50, somewhere in there. It's a little bit different between Lightroom and Capture One, but we're right here. And now we're very close. We have a very similar process. Lightroom, Capture One. This is where it's gonna count, right? This is where the worms come in and we do not want worms because that is like, that's like doom. That's the, like people, people talk about worms in Lightroom like it's the dune worm coming for you, but we might find out it's not quite that extreme. And this is Capture One. Let's go to our details panel and let's actually turn off all grain and make sure all of the defaults are set here. Whoops, not that. So resetting, resetting. These are default settings now in Capture One, okay? 
I'm gonna zoom in more because we need to see what's happening at about 200% for purposes of the video so we really show these details. Back to Lightroom for a second. Again, zooming into 200%. So we're bringing her face and this background detail here all in at once. 200%, 200%. The first thing I noticed at defaults, this is at defaults with the same general process applied, but no, no noise reduction other than what's default in the app, right? Lightroom has a little more noise going on. So at a glance, we're like, okay, I see what they're talking about. There's worms, dune, we're done. Video over, but wait, let's look a little closer. Remember, we're at 200%. If we go to 100%, we see it a little bit, but 200%, there's definitely something going on here in these details. And what people say is this is the way Lightroom interprets the X-Trans sensor. Let's go down to Lightroom's defaults. By default, Lightroom is sharpening at 40. And I think when I look, when I first saw this, I thought, okay, why is Lightroom sharper? And then I started looking and also Capture One has a default sharpening. In fact, it's at 120, but Capture One's sharpening is of course different. It's a different algorithm. So the numbers don't necessarily line up. Noise reduction by default, this is interesting, is at 50 on this file in Capture One. Once noise And noise reduction is at zero in Lightroom. So obviously we're gonna be sharper in Lightroom because there's no noise reduction. We of course have the default color noise reduction because if you don't use color noise reduction on pretty much any image, well, you're gonna see results, right? But here we are. Let's start turning down. Let's turn off the noise reduction. I know this isn't the default, but let's turn off noise reduction. Okay, that changed a lot. As soon as we turn off the noise reduction, in Capture One, it's interpreting it a little bit differently, but I gotta be honest, and you tell me, maybe it looks a little wormier, uh, but they both have artifacts going on, guys. I mean, we can see in both of these, remember, we're still in Capture One here, there's not a lot of difference. So let's talk about how we actually handle this. So this is defaults, but we don't edit with defaults, right? That's why we, we tweak the sliders. That's why we learn our software. That's why we have presets and styles and, and actions and Photoshop and Capture One and Lightroom is to not use straight out of camera because a raw file straight out of camera isn't meant to be used, even though, yes, we're trying to get it right in camera. Let's go back and look. Here we are in Capture One. Here we are in Lightroom. Honestly, there's very little difference. Look down here on the cheek, right? You see very little difference. In comparing these two, here's Lightroom and here's Capture One. The light on the cheek might be lifted just a little bit more. They're both handling pretty well on the highlights. They both have artifacts. What happens now if we put our noise reduction back? Okay, so here's noise reduction in Capture One. There's no default noise reduction for Lightroom, so let's put that up to 50 as well or 40. I think Lightroom's might be a little more intense. We don't want to go to paste, right? No paste. Let's put the, the noise reduction up to about 40. And now we're seeing, honestly, a pretty clean image on both. I feel like there's relatively equal sharpness that Lightroom, here's Capture One, right? Watch the icon in the corner because I know I'm switching back. Capture One, Lightroom. Look at the nose. We're seeing artifacts on the nose and also here where the lights are coming in. Lightroom. Guys, there's hardly any difference. You, we're at 200% here. You'd never see this. In, in real life. But as I showed you in the other video, let's look at how to deal with it. So let, we're back in Capture One. Uh, I can turn up my noise reduction more in Capture One, but look what happens. We start getting pretty pasty if I go above 50. So that default, if anything, I wanna go lower than that on most images, but I'm gonna leave it at 50 for this one. But you can st see that Capture One guys is still having to work with that sensor. There's still artifacts in here. There's still, dare I say, worminess in here. And let's look at that versus this in Lightroom, right? You could argue this, this bokeh spot, her shoulder, you could argue that the Lightroom is actually cleaner in this case and equally or more sharp. I'm gonna call it, Capture One isn't better. It's not, better. There's not an issue of worminess here in either one of these, or if there is, it exists in both of them.
because I see what people are saying with the worminess. But if you watch my other video, we had that similar artifact and expression happening on a Sony full frame camera. It was different, of course, it's a different sensor. It's not an X-Trans, it processes differently, but it's very similar. I'm just gonna say it outright. In 2022, Capture One is not better than Lightroom at the fundamental process, at the noise. The worminess isn't an issue, but even if you don't like the result of this, I'm gonna show you something pretty magical. Watch what happens. Again, I'm in Capture One. Watch what happens as I come in here and I turn up some grain. Okay, I'm gonna switch it to Silver Rich because it's one of my favorites. I'm just gonna start adding a little grain. Look what happens to what was artifactiness. You always are gonna have some artifacts at high noise on digital. That's why I put in that grain and I showed this in the other video. What was just artifacts a second ago is now even and consistent across the frame. In Lightroom, here's 100% right here, okay? Again, we have a little bit of that artifactiness. Let's go down here to grain, right here, and the grain settings are a little bit different, but I'm gonna push it up to about 30% grain. We'll leave the size a little bit smaller and the roughness a little bit smaller for now. Look what we just did. Let me turn off the grain. Let's go back to 200%, grain off, grain on. The grain is one of the most powerful tools that people are not using in Lightroom and Capture One and in most of these tools. Using that grain, you can take noise, which the more you reduce it, you either get pastiness or artifacts. It's simply the nature. And some tools are better. Of course, you can get plugins. If you have an image you really need to get clean, you can get Topaz or you can get neat or something like that. And those are good tools, don't get me wrong. I just almost never need them because even on a high ISO image, I can come in here, process it right, and come out the other side smelling like a rose. Let's find another image from the Fuji and just look at it here and make sure that I'm not crazy. Here's an ISO 10,000. There's a lot of noise on this. Again, 200%, remember, 200%. Look at what I'm looking at here. There's quite a bit of noise, but let's reset all our noise. And I've got a preset for that that I'm using from Filmist, but you can, of course, manually tweak the sliders. Now, Lightroom defaults, you can see that grittiness, that worminess. Now we've really pushed it, we're at ISO 10,000. Let's go back to Capture One and find that same image. It's cropped a little bit differently, but you see more or less we have the same thing. And more or less we have the same process. I believe I applied the same preset from Filmus when I was just making the other video. Let's reset our grain and basically all our default settings here. Here's how Fuji sees this out of the gate, right here. And let's zoom in more, get that 200%. All right, Lightroom, 200%. Right there around the balloons, a lot of stuff going on in the background, on the bridge, and the shadows. Uh, but remember, Capture One's putting noise reduction on by default. So let's turn that noise reduction on in Lightroom go down here, and I'm just gonna turn up our noise reduction to about, I'm not gonna go to 50 in Lightroom, I feel like it's too much, I'm gonna go to like 39, okay? And I'm gonna turn my sharpening up, let's even go down, let's go to like 30. Okay, so Capture One, Lightroom. Capture One, Lightroom. They both still have artifacts, and plenty of them. Capture One is interpreting the artifacts a little bit differently. Now you can actually use the Enhance tool in Lightroom to try and clean it up even a little bit more uh, using Lightroom's AI tools. And Lightroom's AI tools are ahead of Capture One's, but I'm not even gonna do that for purposes of this because I don't feel like it changes a lot on these images. I think the main thing to look at here is that in both of these, there's artifacts. Again, we're in Capture One here in Lightroom. There's actually more weird color noise artifacts going on on the Fuji. But if you look at some of the details, let's look at the faces down here. Uh, again, this is Capture One, and you can see we're having that same problem, that artifact problem on the face, and it's basically the same here. Now, I'm gonna show you a secret. I'm gonna show you the preset, the formula I made. You can tweak with the sliders like I just showed you, but the preset that I'm gonna put for free on the Filmus page is this right here. Let's watch what happens. We're defaults more or less, but we've put a little noise reduction. The formula I made changes the sharpening, the grain, and the noise reduction. And so I just put it in the preset and a style for Capture One. So what I'm gonna just start doing is using this right here, high ISO filmic, and boom. Now remember we're at 200%, let's undo that. Artifacty, grain. Now you might look at this and say, and I covered this in the other video, so watch that video. You might say, oh, well, we're losing detail. You can sharpen more, you can put less grain, you can do what you want. 
I'm also gonna make that low ISO filmic formula. Uh, and you can, you can apply this preset that I'm putting out there and then you can dial back the grain over here if you want. That's why I love using native tools. Here is zero. Here's the high SL filmic. By adding grain, we've balanced our noise reduction and our sharpening. But by adding a little bit of grain, we've taken what, what, look, what was artifacts and noise and blended that in to just make it part of the texture. Let's go back to Capture One, and I actually built that same preset. It's different because it's Capture One, but if I go to Filmist, I have that same preset here, and there we go. Now again, let's not zoom in quite as far. Let's go back and do our one-to-one -one zoom. So we get more of a real world view, and here is Capture One, and here is Lightroom. Capture One, Lightroom. Obviously there's subtle differences in the processing of these. There's virtually no intelligible difference between these. Now if you're looking at this and you're saying, what are you talking about, Gavin? You're blind, obviously Capture One is, is better. Maybe so, but I'm, I've been looking at this comparison for years because people are always saying this, and this is my conclusion for now. Right now, as we come into 2022, both of them work fine. Neither one of them, as long as you balance out your noise reduction and your sharpening in equal terms, they're not that much difference. A high ISO file is going to have noise. As you reduce the noise, you're going to have artifacts. It's just the nature of the beast. Stop worrying about it. Use the noise to your advantage by by managing your grain settings, even if you do it after all the edits on your output, right? Maybe if you're going to Photoshop or something like that, you, you don't wanna do that. You don't want to add grain and potentially get more artifacts. I talked about that in the other video as well. But if you're using Fuji files, use Capture One, use Lightroom. Competition is great. It's great these two are going at it. It's great that we have other third-party tools out there. Mostly I'm using Capture One or Lightroom. Both are working really good. Both are looking great, both process great. As I did in my recent comparison of Lightroom versus Capture One that wasn't specific to noise where I was talking more general, they both have their advantages. I'll also link the Lightroom versus Capture One general comparison in the comments. But in terms of worminess, Dune is not coming to devour you in 2022. Regardless of what you use, you're gonna be fine high ISO or low ISO, use what works for the situation. Stop worrying about the noise and start making art. And use your tools like your grain tool because it's actually pretty magical if you tweak with those grain tools how much it will actually do for your photos and for your detail to give you that organic richness. And when you go to print, it's gonna look good. You can decide how much or how little or how much noise reduction or if you need to go further. I'm not trying to make your images look like mine. I'm just showing you what I found, and the results are good in both. Let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, please, if you like this kind of content, guys. And if you disagree, I'm cool with that. Tell me why in the comments, and we'll keep looking, we'll keep comparing, we'll keep analyzing, because that's, that's what it's all about. All right, you guys, peace, and we'll see you on the next one.